This is a video about the types of MBUS cable available, their strengths and their weaknesses. First up, this is a Belden 8760 cable plug. Maybe 7mm diameter and it has a pair of conductors inside, stranded within a sheath. Sleeve, a screen, a drain wire and a pair of strand conductors which are just twisted together. This can be joined without stripping it with certain types of connector. You can strip and twist it or you can strip and ferrule. The cable is is pretty tough, very resilient for installation purposes. This is your typical Cat5 cable. It has a draw, wire and four pairs inside, each of which are twisted. can be joined unstripped if you have the right type of connector. You can try stripping it and joining individual strands. It never really works well. You can twist a pair of strands together to give it some strength. That, that works better. Or you can apply ferrules, which give these some strength suitable for use in terminal blocks. This is KNX type cable. It's a little thicker than the Belden 8760, but not much. Bends well, pretty robust. Inside we have screen with a drain wire plastic sheet over the cables and a pair of reinforcing strings to give the cable strength when drawing it and then a pair of twisted pair cables. These are solid core. With the right type of connector they can be joined without stripping them. By stripping them and leaving them single and these are thick enough to, to take a terminal block or fold them over as if it was a pair of twin nerve cable and it was a consumer in it or a, or a faceplate. Now I'll show you some of the connector types that can be used. Some of the most common MBUS data cards and these have terminal blocks on them. These terminal blocks have a cage where as the screw moves the entire cage moves. This makes them good at trapping all of a cable. So the cable types we've seen, we can take our typical Elden 8760, fits quite easily and the cage will trap all of that. Can't really use ferrules, there's not enough space in a data card to use a ferruled 8760 type cable. We can use at five in a ferrule. If we're careful we can use cat5 twisted and we can use the KNX type cable straight in as a pair. All of these work well. The best are the 8760 unstranded or the KNX type cable straight in. Some heat meters, particularly cheap ones, or the compact meters designed for use in a heat interface unit come with a pre-molded cable that cannot be replaced and this often has really thin stranded cable which you're expected to join to some Belden 8760 style cable 
or perhaps some EIB KNX tag cable or some Pat5. How do we do this? I would use a, a, a Wago 221 type connector here. This is a Wago 221. Flip these two little levers, pop it in and attach it. That is adjustable, removable, unfortunately also stealable and very useful on site, so you'll often find those go missing. The other option are these BT style jelly, jelly grips. Pop one cable through here, pop your second cable in there, ensuring that they're all the way to the end of the connector. And then crimp with a pair of pliers, ensuring that you've crimped it all the way down. That is now waterproof, it's sealed with gel, it's cut the insulation and joined the cables, and it can't be stolen on site. If you do have to remove that, you have to cut the cable. Other options include these old Awago 222 style connectors. They're like the 221s, but bulkier, and they will attack your fingers compared to these little levers. There's also the KNX style connector, which is only suitable for use with a KNX cable. Now these, you take your stripped KNX cable, about 8mm, and push it in. They have a test point built onto them, so you can use it for measuring voltages in the system. And if you need to remove a cable, you can grab it and just twist and they come out again. And back in. Personally, if you're using these data cards, I would use this KNX style cable. It's available only with one pair if you like, rather than two. Or the 8760 style cable to go into that data card. If you're using heat meters that come with a molded cable, I'd recommend the jelly crimps as a first preference, or these Wago T2 ones as a second preference. Noting though that they can be pinched on site. When you're back at the junction box, Say, for example, you have several HIUs coming back to a, a riser. I prefer this KNX style cable with the KNX connectors inside some wood grip box. This could be our spine cable coming up, going forward. We take a pair of strippers, strip it. Trim off any excess. And then push them into these connectors. If it's gripped, it's connected. Same again for the spine coming up. And then we're done. This makes it easy to test if we have voltage here and here, for example, yellow and white being MBUS, red and black either being a Modbus uh, linked to electronic HIUs, or 24 volts for remote differential pressure sensors and whatnot. If we need to, we can twist these and remove them. And you have a bunch more ports available for connecting HIUs coming from the laterals.
Another way of doing this might be to use Wagos for the spine and then these KNX connectors at the HIUs. So here we'd have the spine coming up from the bottom and up to the rest of the, the site. And we've taken it into a pair of, of Wago blocks. From these Wago blocks we've gone to three sets of KNX connectors and we can run our HIUs out from these. The advantage of doing it this way is it's quicker to flip a Wago spring and disconnect an entire set of HIUs for fault finding purposes, for example if you have a short circuit, than it is to use the Wago connectors. These red and black could be used for a 24 volt bus or a mod bus, and you can connect the drains together as well if you wanted to. It's a bit scruffier once you have the HIU connections on, but you can see the principle. Spine running through, lines off to each HIU, plugs in from the side. If you're using this Belden 8760 style cable, I would always use Wago 221s. The reason these and the data cards supplied with premium heat meters work is the style of the connection. terminal block has a screw going into a frame. The cables all sit in here along with all the squiggly strands that are running astray and then this clamps the entire assembly. The Wago 221 is similar, you have your housing, you have your contact terminal and a spring piece that, that moves up to clamp all your scraggly bits of cable. This is pretty much guaranteed to work. Often you see cheap and cheerful Wix screw fix style chocolate boxes which have their two, two metal terminal blocks inside with a screw that hopefully traps both of your cables underneath at the bottom there but often in practice completely misses your cable and has them scattered around the side. This style of chocolate box should never, never be used on an MBUS network, in my opinion. It's asking for trouble. These Wago 221s cost about 50 pence per connection. These style of terminal blocks you'll find it on all expensive equipment, be it BMSs or heat meters, and it's there for a reason. It's to make sure you get a decent connection. That style of chocolate box, if you find yourself fit face with it, your best bet is taking some EIB cable and folding it over, using ferrules on 8760 to try and get bulk these up and make sure no strands go astray. Or ferrules on, on your Cat5. Personally, I prefer jelly crimps for attaching HIUs. Fit ones, waterproof, non-tamper. And then these KNX style cables with KNX cable up the riser. Second preference is your Belvin 8760 style cable, either with a ferrule in a Wago or without. It, it makes very little difference, and you can visibly see that both of those cables have been clamped by the bracket. Using this style of cable will give you the most reliable MBUS network. Useful tools, small screwdriver, large Phillips screwdriver. I bring a pair of side cutters with stripper holes in. These are normally designed for one and a half milli cable but if held at an angle they're quite happy stripping Belden or if you have to get an X cable. A pair of pliers for crimping connections or removing cable from KNX style connectors. A small pair of sharp cable cutters for stripping cables. This 20 pence cable stripping tool even works on flex. So you've got some 0.75 milli heat resistant flex inside an HIU. 
saves a lot of time and it's a convenient measurement for a whole tool, part tool, fraction of tool. Sharpie marker for labelling cable. KNX screen. It makes a difference. These are nice and easily visible. Pocket standing knife. Ratchet ferrule tool. This is for attaching boot laces to your Cat5 style cables. Making them more robust and suitable for use in terminals if you have to. And then a bag of Wago 221s, various sizes, and jelly crimps, the variable sizes, various sizes. These are available as three way jelly crimps as well. Cable clips, cable ties for strain relieving things. And then I just want to show a few more bits and pieces. This is the string from inside KNX cable. You get two of these in every one. It's a good amount of reinforcement, but can be tricky to cut using blunt electrician's tools. Piece of cake to cut using the smaller sharp side cutters. Other styles of KNX connector available. They do four-way connectors, should you want them. And the holders can be four-way or six-way. These just slot in, so you can use them on their own. I, I wouldn't advise. I'd always try and use them on these thin rail clips that can also be screwed on to piece of cake.